Hey baby, what are we having for dinner tonight? Again. This video is the second part of my MirSuggestor project. In the first video, I wrote the server as well as the database connection. If you haven't watched it, go check it out now. I'll wait. In this video, I'm going to write the front end. But one word of caution though. I'm not a UX expert or UI designer, so my front ends tend to look, let's call them useful. If you spot anything, please leave a comment down below and give me some advice. Everything is appreciated. As for the language of choice, I use Vue.js. Even though I have way more experience with Angular, I think Vue.js is a better choice for a small project like this. So now that we know what to do, let's get coding. I'm starting out with an empty project. I created it using the Vue CLI and added Vue Router, Vueify and Vuexs dependencies. Then I cleaned up all the boilerplate code that gets created like the home in the about view. If I start the project, you can see that I get absolutely nothing. Just what I wanted. Now that everything is set up, let's get coding. I am done with the first coding session and I wanted to show you what I've done so far. On the left, you can see that I added the meals view under the slash path. So it will be the first thing you see when you open the page. On the right, you can see the result of it. A simple list of all the known meals as well as a category selector. Each meal has one category and if I select, let's say, fast food meals, you can see that only the fast food meals get listed. Same goes for the low carb or all meals. Now let's head over to the code. Let's first start with an HTML part. The category select has all categories as items. For now, the categories are hard coded and it contains all low carb and fast food. The V model, here the selected category, gets set as soon as the category is selected. As for the meals, I simply iterate over all the filtered meals and display their name in a span. I will explain the filtered meals function in a bit. Let's skip over the boring CSS stuff and as I said before, the categories are currently hard coded and so are the meals. These are the same meals I used in the backend code. So as soon as I'm finished with the visual stuff, I will make the actual rest calls to my backend. But for now, having everything hard coded lets me focus on the visuals first. After the view instance has been created, I execute the sort function, which is defined right here. And it sorts the meals by the name. The filtered meals function I used while iterating over my meals in the HTML is defined as a computed function. This is necessary because I always wanted to show the filtered meals in the HTML. The function itself first checks if the selected category is empty or all. If so, it returns the complete meal list. If the selected category is something other than that, it filters the meals by category. Now that the first few steps are done, I need a way to create new meals or edit and delete meals. So I think I'm going to write some kind of component that will be a pop-up or dialogue. On the left, you can see that I added the three mentioned dialogues into the components folder. Here on the right, you can see that apart from the add button, it looks the same. Let me quickly change the view to phone. Since I will be using the site from my phone most of the time, it makes sense to check how it looks there. Uh, yep, iPhone is okay. It shouldn't matter that much though. Now let's add a meal. If I press the add button, you can see that a new dialog pops up. Here I can select the category and enter a name. Again, we will add a burger. Cool, now let's see if the filtering works. Yep, nice. So if I select the burger, you can see that two buttons show up. To edit the burger, press the ranch icon and change the name to um, yummy burger. Okay, there is a small bug. The meals do not get sorted, but that's okay. Let's fix it later. But as you can see, the name got changed. To remove the burger, hit the trash icon and press OK. And my yummy burger is gone. Now let's go over the code. You can see that I added the add meal dialog component next to the select. The vOn directive is used to trigger the on add meal function as soon as we receive the on add meal event from the add meal dialog. The edit meal dialog as well as the delete meal dialog are placed behind the name span. Both components get the meal passed from the parent, in our case the meal view, using the vBind directive. Same as in the add meal dialog, the meals view listens on events from the child components and executes the corresponding functions. These are on edit meal and on delete meal respectively. I put a diff around those and bound the meal buttons visible class to it. This will be set as soon as the selected meal is the same as the meal in the v4 loop. If we go down a bit, you can see that the set selected meal function simply sets the selected meal property. You can also see that the functions that are used in the dialogs all operate on the meals array. 
The on at meals function simply pushes the data it receives into the meals array and sorts afterwards. The on edit meal function first finds the index of the meal in the array where the ID is the same as the edited meal. Then it sets the new values. The on delete meal function also finds the index and removes the meal at the given index. Now let's have a look at the add meal dialog. Skip over the boring HTML part. It looks mostly like the example code I copied from the Vue.js documentation for vDialog. So nothing exciting. In here I have two functions that get called on the corresponding buttons, cancel and save. The cancel function resets all the fields and then closes the dialog by setting dialog to false. The save function creates a new data object with the selector category and the entered name. Then it resets the field, closes the dialog and emits the on add meal event with a new defined meal. The edit meal dialog works almost the same way. The cancel function resets the fields and closes the dialog, whereas the save function creates a new data object, sets the fields, resets and closes, and emits the on edit meal event. The only difference is that it receives the meal to edit property from the parent meals view and sets the selected category as well as the meal name field after the view instance has been created. The same goes for the delete meal dialog. It also receives the meal to delete property from its parent. In the cancel function I only close the dialog and in the ok function the dialog also gets closed and the on delete event gets emitted. In the end I'm going to have two views, the meals view and a suggestions view. So I'm going to use the router to switch between those. I added two buttons at the bottom of my app to switch between views. So if I click on meals, nothing happens since I'm already in the meals view. But if I click on the suggestions, the router pushes to the slash suggestions route and the view changes to the suggestions view. Here you can see that I have a select for the category as well as for the number of meals. If you have watched my previous video, you might remember that the slash suggestions endpoint has two URL parameters. One is the category parameter and the other is the count parameter. So the selected fields will be passed as the URL parameters once we make the connection to the server. Pressing the surprise me button will then suggest you with meals. But for now, as you can see, I simply return five meals. So if I press again, the same five meals will be displayed. Now let's go over the code. In the app view file, I added a div containing two buttons. When the click event gets fired, either the go to meals or go to suggestions function gets called. These are defined here and simply push the corresponding route as stated before. If you have a look at the suggestions view, you can see two selects for the categories as well as for the number of meals. If either of these is changed, the corresponding V models get set. The surprise me button fires the suggest meals functions I will show in a bit. And for the meals list, I simply iterate over the meals array. Here you can see that the categories are still hard coded, so are the number of meals. I think I will stick to seven since I never planned for more than one week. In the created section you can see that I set selected category to all and select account to 5 as default values. The sort function is the same as in the meals view, so nothing new here. It still sorts after the name. And as said before, the suggest meals function currently sets the meals to a static array of 5 meals. Connect to the backend? Right now? Okay, you're the boss boss. While setting up the project, I totally forgot to add the Axios dependency to make the HTTP call to the backend, so I added it now. I also needed to add course options to my backend, therefore I used this dependency right here and these few lines in the main Go file. As the allowed origins header, I set it to localhost 8080, hence my frontend, and I also added get, post, put and delete as the allowed methods. This should be enough for a simple web page. First, let's see if the frontend works when I use the real backend. I made a oopsie. While recording I totally forgot that I also updated the main.js file. Good thing there's video editing, am I right? In the main.js file I created an Axios instance setting the base URL to the URL of my server. Then I defined a global HTTP client instance to use in all my other files. Now back to Thomas. Thank you Thomas. First let's see if the front end works when I use the real backend. The server as well as npm is running and you can see on the right side that I still have all my meals that I have added last time. So the list meals function works. Even if I select other categories, it still works. Let's add a new meal and see if the post works. As always, add a yummy burger. And there you go, the post still works. Now let's edit the burger and remove the yummy prefix. Okay, this works too. Let's have a look if the suggestions are also running. Surprise me. And okay, I got five meals from the server. And five other meals and another opt. Finally, let's check if the categories and the count queries are working. Yep, great success. Now let's go over the code. If you have a look at the meals view, you can see that I first set the meals variable to an empty array. Within the created function, I then call the list meals function to ask the backend for all the meals. This will make an HTTP request to the server and request all the meals after the view instance has been created. 
The list meals function first builds the URL given a category was selected. If so, the category URL parameter gets appended. After that, the global HTTP client is used to execute the HTTP request. If data is returned and the status is 200, I set the meals to whatever the server returned and sort afterwards. If something unexpected is returned, I simply log to the console. This is fine since this is only a personal project. Usually an error dialog would be better, but this is okay for now. I do the same if something goes wrong with the HTTP request. I also change the on add meal, on edit meal and on delete meal functions, although they all work the same way. Prepare the URL, make the request and update the meals using the list meals function. If something goes wrong, log to console. The suggestions view also got updated and now uses the HTTP client to request the server. Same as before, prepare the URL, make the request and be happy. To serve my frontend, I will be using Nginx. If you don't know Nginx, I'm sorry, there's no help for you. So let's put the code onto this, shall we? As you can see on the right side of the screen, I'm already connected to my Raspberry Pi. I also already downloaded Nginx, but I haven't configured it yet. And as you can see, port 80 is already in use by something else. But first, let's build and deploy the frontend. In the package JSON file, you can see that there are already a build script from the default project setup. So I only have to execute npm run, build and wait a bit. Well, that only took ages. But as you can see right here, the disk directory popped up which contains everything we need. Now copy the whole directory using the secure copy command to my Raspberry Pi. And here we go, the disk directory is on my Pi. Now it's time to configure Nginx. To do so, we need to go over to this directory right here. There is a default configuration file right in there that Nginx uses to serve whatever is defined. Now let's change it to meet our needs. Instead of listening to port 80, it should listen to port 8080. This should solve the port already in use conflict. And on the root, I need to set the complete path to the disk directory since Nginx should serve the index.html file that lies within this folder. The rest should be fine, so let's quit and save, restart Nginx and let's go over to the web browser and see if it's working. Cool, Nginx seems to serve our website. No meals in here, so let's create one. Well, ha, okay, I got it. I forgot to start the backend, yeah, try again. Still nothing, so why is this? Ah, oh, I forgot to set the course correctly. Sorry about that. Let's quickly set it in the main.js file, build and deploy it again. And also change it in the main go file, build it. Yeah, yeah, wrong directory. Build and deploy the backend again, restart the server and let's see if uh, uh, we got a random burger. This might have been from the tests last time I guess. But okay, let's add a salad. Nice. So this works now. Let's check the suggestions real quick and boom. So what are we having next week? Burger and salad. Nice. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. If you want to see more of this, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Until next time, keep on coding.